Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the City of Muskegon City Commission meeting for April 22nd, 2014. Before we begin, uh, Mr. George Monroe will come forward and lead us in prayer, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Mr. Monroe. Shall we pray? Our dear Heavenly Father, again, we thank you for this privilege, Lord, that we have the freedom to meet here, Lord. We thank you for each and every one that has come out. Lord, we thank you, and we ask you to bless our clerk and our mayor and our commissioners and our, mayor, our manager, Lord, that you would undertake for them and protect them, Lord, and be with this meeting, and we'll give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mr. Monroe. We have the roll call, please. Commissioner Johnson? Here. Mayor Galran? Here. Commissioner Hood? Here. Vice Mayor Spataro? Here. Commissioner German? Here. Commissioner Rinsa Pacifica? Here. Commissioner Turnquist? Here. Thank you. And before we get into the meat of the business, we have some recognitions to make. Could I have <coughs> Miss Shirley Green, if she's in the audience, come up? And uh, is there a Mr. Greg Borgman? Is Deborah Griffin? Good. Well, these three individuals, Deborah Griffin, Greg Borgman, Shirley Green, recently were recognized with the Outstanding Citizenship Year Award, and uh, we coordinate that uh, along with the Muskegon Rotary. And uh, you received your award at luncheon last Thursday. last Thursday. Okay, well, we don't have any additional lunch. You have your reward, <laughs> but we want to recognize you for your work within the community and the treasures that you are. Beginning with Shirley Green, she resides in her home uh, located approximately 200 feet from her childhood residence. Uh, she has a deep love of the city and a deep motivation for all the planning and beautification she aptly does for Lakeside and the city of Muskegon. Just ride through Lakeside and you'll see the wonderful job Shirley's done trying to revitalize the area. She's been involved in many events, including spearheading the holiday basket drive for shut-ins in her neighborhood, assisting several school functions involved in the Lakeside Neighborhood Association, the Lakeside District Association, and Muskegon Medical Associates, as well as organizing the Lakeside Easter Egg Hunt and volunteering for the Memorial Day Parade in Lakeside. And each year, she hosts a pumpkin roll down the hill of her dead-end street. As one friend states, Shirley is a strong-minded person. I, you know, I've never seen that. You know. <laughs> <laughs> if she's unable to do it herself, she will find the necessary people to help her accomplish her goal. Um, she's much admired for her strong will and willingness to keep fighting for her community. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Shirley Green. Now the next person, Greg Borgman, you look awfully familiar. We've probably run into each other over the past several times over the last De 25, 30 years. 30. Uh, Greg is uh, described as a caring, trustworthy, and respectful individual. He's a lifelong resident of Muskegon, a member of the Episcopal Church, and a proud Big Red. Greg has served on many boards to prom uh, promote and better our community. His leadership and dedication serving on the Housing Board of Appeals here at the City of Muskegon has been helped, helpful in fighting blight and bringing beauty to our city. He has a passion for making Muskegon a better place and has led in his current position as chairman of both the Nelson Neighborhood Improvement Association and the Neighborhood Associations of Muskegon. 
In addition, he's been a block captain, participated in the Citizens Police Academy, organized several car shows, and volunteered for many events as well as fundraising efforts. He's a great promoter of downtown, employed by Can Do Industries, an organization that helps individuals overcome barriers and helps prevent them from joining, that may prevent them from joining the workforce. Greg has convinced his employer to invest in downtown by opening an office in Terrace Plaza, where his office currently resides. He was also part of the Muskegon Retail Incubator and was instrumental in seeing the restoration and adaptive reuse of the Russell Block. Greg's friends describe him as a kind of person who's willing to help anyone, loved by many, non-judgmental, has a belief in people and their potential, and an ability to connect with individuals from all walks of life, and has a strong faith and commitment to his community, his friends, and his family. Uh, he's a great friend. Um, we just got to make sure that you don't get sick because, you know, I got to run out in the middle of the night and bring you the right stuff when you take the wrong medication. I'll we'll never forget that. Don't. You take, you, you take care of yourself. <laughs> Good. Deborah Griffin is described as a dedicated, caring, and intuitive individual. She's used her many skill sets to help improve the community by listening and helping those in the community who feel they are not being heard. One way she achieved her objective was to found a group called Parents Have Power, a Muskegon parent involvement group working to unite the community in support of public schools. She founded the advocacy group to give parents of students in Muskegon public schools a voice in the many changes proposed in the school system, and there's been a whole heck of a lot of them over the past several years, haven't there, Deborah? With Deborah's computer training, she was able to create a website and also started a Facebook page so parents may share ideas. The website has also created a mechanism for sharing information on how to empower our children through education. She founded a political advocacy group, SPARC, which is a grassroots coalition whose goal is to begin an honest dialogue between community members about issues that currently affect the county, primarily in Muskegon and Muskegon Heights, including feelings of isolation, race relations, poverty, high unemployment, neighborhood blight, and violence and other issues. She's also the co-founder of Big Girls Do Work Out, an advocacy group that promotes exercise and healthy eating habits and overall healthy lifestyle targeted at full-size women in the community. How about full-size men? <laughs> <laughs> the website she created showcases different exercising techniques, healthy recipes, and other ways of re releasing stress and ways to build self-esteem. Citizens like Deborah are ones that make and keep communities strong. She knows that it's not always easy, but she keeps moving and she continues to engage fellow citizens in the effort to improve our community. And I forgot to, because we gave Shirley a clap, I forgot to give you a clap in between, but you know I love you. But, and for Deborah, let's give them all a hand. Let's thank them. Shall we carry on, or is that good enough? That was very good. Okay, good. Consent agenda, please. Approval of minutes, city clerk, summary request to approve minutes of the April 7th commission work session meeting and the April 8th city commission meeting. Staff recommendation, approval of the minutes. Request to fly the Norwegian flag, city clerk, summary request. Sons of Norway are requesting permission to fly the Norwegian flag at city hall on Saturday, May 17th, in honor of Norway's constitution day. Staff recommendation, approval of the request. City MDOT agreement for veteran park improvements, engineering, summary request. Approve the contract with MDOT for the pedestrian mobility improvements at the Veterans Memorial Park at the causeway between northbound and southbound M120 and approve the resolution authorizing the mayor and city clerk to sign the contract. 
staff recommendation, approve the contract and resolution authorizing the mayor and clerk to sign both. Amendment to chapter 30, fire prevention and protection, article for recreational fires, public safety, summary of request. The director of public safety requests that the city commission review and authorize the proposed amendments to chapter 30, article four, the recreational fire ordinance of the city of Muskegon fire prevention and protection ordinance. The Muskegon Fire Department has reviewed and proposed changes in our recreational fire ordinance to better serve the community at large and address illegal burning issues in our city in which fire police must respond to in order to maintain general public safety. The amendments are to address size of the fire pit, materials that are allowed in the fire pit, used manufactured portable burning stand, the prohibition of of steel burn barrels commonly used for burning trash in yard waste and examples of items that cannot be burned without violating the amended ordinance. Staff recommendations. Staff recommends approving amendments to said existing ordinance. DWE, MBE, WBE procurement policy for federally contracted programs and collaborations, affirmative action and risk management. Summary request. The contract and procurement policy for federally contracted programs and collaborations has been developed to include the fair share goals in language to meet the fair, the good faith effort requirements of our federally contracted funds. The fair share goals are specific to the Environmental Protective Agency contracts and good faith efforts are standard to our federally contracted funds. <coughs> the steps for good faith efforts will allow the city to achieve compliance in all of our federal contracts and ensure that the disadvantaged business enterprises DBE, Minority Business Enterprises, MBE, and Women-Owned Business Enterprises, WBEs, are actively solicited for participation in the bid process for contracting and procurement of supplies, construction, equipment, and services under all federal contracts and collaborations. The policy will be placed in all contracts and collaborations that include federal funds. Staff recommendation, approval of the City of Muskegon DBE, MBE, WBE procurement policy for federally contracted programs and collaborations and authorize the mayor and clerk to sign. Fireworks display permit for Muskegon Country Club, City Clerk. Summary request, Melrose Pyrotechnics Incorporated is requesting approval of a fireworks display permit for July 4, 2014 at the Muskegon Country Club 2801 Lakeshore Drive. Fire Marshal Metcalf will inspect the fireworks on the day of the event. Staff recommendation, approval contingent on inspection of the fireworks and approval of insurance. Fireworks display permit for 4th of July celebration at Heritage Landing, City Clerk. Summary request, Night Magic is requesting approval of a fireworks display permit for July 4th at Heritage Landing. Fire Marshal, Marshal Metcalf has reviewed the request and recommends approval contingent on inspection of the fireworks. Staff recommendation, approval contingent on inspection of the fireworks and approval of insurance. Thank you. Commissioners, you've heard the consent agenda as presented. Are there any items you wish to have removed for further discussion? Vice Mayor. Uh, item C, Charlie. Item D. E. Seeing no others, may I have a motion to uh, accept the consent agenda? Vice Mayor. Thank you. I would move that we approve the consent agenda as read with the exceptions of item, item C, Charlie, and E, Echo. Second. It has been moved by the Vice Mayor, seconded by Commissioner Johnson to accept the consent agenda as presented minus item C and item E. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Mayor Galran? Yes. Commissioner Hood? Yes. Vice Mayor Spataro? Yes. Commissioner German? Yes. Commissioner Winston Pacifica? Yes. Commissioner Turnquist? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Item C, Vice Mayor? Thank you. I would move that we approve the contract and resolution authorizing uh, the mayor and clerk to sign both regarding the city MDOT agreement for veterans park improvements. Second. It has been moved by the Vice Mayor, seconded by Commissioner German to Approve the contract and resolution authorizing the mayor and the clerk to sign regarding the MDOT agreement for veteran park improvement. Vice Mayor. Thank you. Well, we all know of this area as a, an entrance into our town and an important one, but more importantly, it is a symbol of our respect for our veterans who have served this country. And I see that there are members of um, the park group here, and I thought perhaps they'd like the opportunity to explain to the general public, uh, the improvements that this will involve. So, 
Do we have takers? Yes, we do. <laughs> if you just get your name and address and uh, dig right in. I'm Dr. Dennis Cobbler. I live in uh, 1045 Camelot in Laketon Township, but I had a practice here in downtown Muskegon for 40 plus years. Uh, we've been working with uh, a combination of great partnerships, not only the uh, Northside Lions, the County Veterans Advisory Board, the Vet Center, the uh, Chapter 31 of the Vietnam Veterans of America, the County of Muskegon, the City of Muskegon, the City of North Muskegon, and we've worked with MDOT and Hooker de Young <coughs> and our uh, architectural engineer here, Bruce Colleen, to uh, come up with a project that will, uh, basically the first project we're doing is to remove the lights along the road and place the, along the sidewalks so the park will be lit from within rather than from the street, uh, thereby using more, more friendly to the community. Also at the north end will be a continuation of the sidewalk so that it's all handicap accessible and this is all part of the, the MDOT grant. Uh, paving the four existing parking lots, putting in a fifth parking lot up on the northwest corner on the other side of the river. And this is going to be bringing in a lot more money to the community uh, with other grants that we're working with. So we uh, think this first project with MDOT is just the tip of the iceberg for this park and it truly will by the time we're done and rededicate the park at the 80th anniversary in November this will be again Michigan's most beautiful mile very good thank you thank you doc thank you gentlemen thank you for all your uh, efforts and your, your 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 hard work we really appreciate it anything from the commission Roll call, please. Commissioner Hood? Yes. Vice Mayor Spataro? Yes. Commissioner German? Yes. Commissioner Rizzo Sipica? Yes. Commissioner Turnquist? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Mayor Galrin? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Item E, Commissioner Turnquist? Yes, I'd like to make the motion to the approval of the City of Muskegon DBE, MBE, WBE procurement policy for federally contracted programs and collaborations and authorize the mayor and clerk to sign. Second. It has been moved by Commissioner Turnquist, seconded by Commissioner Rinsba Savinga to approve the City of Muskegon DBE, MBE, WBE procurement policy for federally contracted programs and collaborations and authorize the mayor and clerk to sign it. Commissioner? I think it's a great idea. I'm just wondering how the solicitation uh, works. Where do we find people from these three different organizations to uh, give the information when something goes up for bid or for the, for these uh, identified groups yeah Ms. Thompson can you enlighten us I, I think um, Tawana Thompson um, the affirmative action and risk management director for the city of Muskegon and um, this actually came about because um, we were working on compliance for one of our federally contracted you know um, projects that we had had completed and what we are um, looking at in terms of like recruitment, it would be just we have a database that we are currently updating of our disadvantaged business enterprises, which does include the minority business enterprises and the women owned business enterprises. So any of our contracts, that, what, what, what was requested was that I create a policy instead of for every single contract that comes up. Um, having a different policy for each one, what was requested was that I come up with a policy that we could put into the contract language for each of our contracts that we would sign. And then the, the bid process would be the same for anybody else soliciting or offering up. Yes, and it'd be, it city. would be um, actively, you know, if we know that there's an electrical contractor in the area that's a minority contractor, making sure that they're aware of the bid. Um, but also, you know, posting it in public places, you know, and I do have a equal opportunity distribution list that I send information out to. So, and then if people would like to review the contracts, they are welcome to come up to the city to review them. Thank you. Yep. Good. Anything else from the commissioners? 
Matt, roll call, please. Vice Mayor Spataro? Yes. Commissioner German? Yes. Commissioner Marissa Pacifica? Yes. Commissioner Turnquist? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Mayor Galran? Yes. Commissioner Hood? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Let me have public <coughs> hearings, please. 2014-2015 Action Plan Community Neighborhood Services Summary Request to conduct a public hearing of the 2014-2015 <coughs> Action Plan for public comments. Staff recommendation to receive comments about the proposed 2014-2015 Action Plan at the public commission meeting. Juanita, do you need to speak on this? No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. I'm just looking this up. Um, the Community Neighborhood uh, Services Department has uh, pre uh, presented and made public their uh, proposed 2014-2015 action plan. Uh, are there any members of the public that would like to uh, speak to this issue? If not, I'll entertain a motion to close the public hearing and proceed. Motion to close the public hearing. Second. And do you want to? Uh, do we have to do that? Think that's it? Is that it? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. It has been moved by Commissioner Hood, seconded by, I'm sorry, who was that? Uh, Commissioner German, uh, to receive comments about the proposed 2014 2015 action plan and uh, close the public hearing. Any discussion? Just, just one item. Yes. Just, just as a reminder, particularly. Um, you know, so, so many of us are, are relatively new to the commission. Um, when we look at other items with our budget, this is something that when I first was elected and started serving, uh, we were getting nearly four times as much revenue from the federal government through these programs that we get currently. Um, there are things we used to be able to do with these that because those drastic cuts have been made, we're not able to sustain with just local revenue. So I, I think it's important to realize that, uh, you know, this was a very important, still is a very important source of revenue for some of the things that we do that are very important to this community. And through means outside of our control, this revenue has been significantly reduced over the years. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Anything else, Commissioners? Matt, roll call, please. Commissioner German? Yes. Commissioner Risa Basiviga? Yes. Commissioner Turquest? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Mayor Galran? Yes. Commissioner Hood? Yes. Vice Mayor Spataro? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. May we have new business. Concurrence with the Housing Board of Appeals notice in order to demolish the following public safety. 1974 Dowd Street, 1522 Clinton Street, garage only, 1265 Holt Street, 912 East Isabella Avenue, 1141 Jefferson Street. Summary request. This is to request that the City Commission concur with the findings of the Housing Board of Appeals that the structures are unsafe, substandard, a public nuisance, and that they be demolished within 30 days. It is further requested that administration be directed to obtain bids for the demolition of the structures and that the Mayor and City Clerk be authorized and directed to execute a contract for demolition with the lowest responsible bidder. Staff recommendation to concur with the Housing Board of Appeals decision to be demolished. Before I make a motion, do you want to ask if there's oh, something sure. they said need to? Are there any individuals here to speak on 1974 Dowd Street, 1522 Clinton Street Garage only, 1265 Holt Street, 912 East Isabella, 1141 Jefferson? Seeing no one, I would move that uh, we concur with the Housing Board of Appeals uh, notice in order to demolish the structures as described by the clerk. Second. It has been moved by the Vice Mayor and seconded by Commissioner Johnson to concur with the Housing Board of Appeals notice in order to demolish 1974 Dowd Street, 1422 Clinton Street, garage only, 1265 Holt Street, 912 East Isabella Avenue, 1141 Jefferson Street. Any discussion? <coughs> I think you meant 1522. 1522 Clinton, garage only. Very good, thank you. Anything else from the commission on this? <coughs> Roll call, please. Commissioner Rinsa Masipiga? Yes. Commissioner Turnquest? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Mayor Galran? Yes. Commissioner Hood? Yes. Vice Mayor Spitaro? Yes. Commissioner German? Yes. Motion passes. 
Thank you. Item B, please. Special event request, Muskegon Bike Time 2014, Planning Economic Development. Summary of request, Muskegon Bike Time has filed a special event application for the annual Bike Time Festival in downtown Muskegon to be held on July 17th, 18th, and 19th, and 20th of 2014. Portions other requests require city commission approval. Staff recommendation, as in past years, it is recommended that staff be allowed to make the final decisions regarding rental fees and actual costs to be coordinated through the city manager. In addition, staff recommends that if bike time picks up items such as picnic tables, bleachers, and trash cans for distribution at the proper locations, there will be no equipment rental charge to bike time. This must first be approved by and coordinated through city staff. It is also recommended that city staff review staffing levels for city personnel with the bike time staff with the city making the final decision on the number of city staff needed for the event. Regarding street closure, staff recommends approval with the condition that bike time notify affected downtown businesses of the dates and times of street closures and the date and time that no parking restrictions go into effect on those streets. Thank you. Commissioner Hood. I move to accept the recommendation to approve with the condition that by time notify affected downtown businesses of the dates and times of street closures and the date and time that the no parking restrictions go into effect on those streets. Court? Is that good enough? Mm -hmm. Okay. It has been moved by Commissioner Hood, supported by Commissioner Renzo Masibinga to recommend, or by your turn request, okay. hearing aids. <laughs> <laughs> that we approve the special event request for Muskegon Bike Time 2014 and that final decisions regarding rental feeds, actual costs, and contact with downtown businesses, et cetera, uh, be approved by uh, city staff. I think I got that. Okay. Chief, did you want to uh, make any type of staff report before we begin discussions? Um, I think I'll respond if needed. Add some information if it comes up. If not, I, I think. Very good. Okay. <coughs> Questions from uh, commissioners? Do you need a transcript? Sure. <coughs> um, probably going back to Jesus. It seemed like from the day I from the day I, I started here, we began working with the bike time group to um, come up with a plan that that. Uh, worked best in the downtown with uh, the biggest sticking point at the time seemed to be how the farmers market was going to work into the situation. Um, we met with uh, with their group uh, on a number of occasions, including a number of key staff people, um, and including chief as well. And we came up really with a plan that that for the most part mimics what we've done in years past, uh, with the understanding that that the farmers market um, may or may not be able to come into play in, in future years, but but essentially trying to um, to help the event coexist with the farmers market during the days that they will coexist. Um, other than that, there were just a few tweaks and you guys probably see them in there, moving the, the, some of the things off of the sidewalks and into the side streets. Um, and then working with um, some property owners on some concerns that they had with, um, with kind of the late night traffic and the <coughs> things that go on maybe after bike time officially ends at 11 o'clock. Uh, some of that included uh, working with bike type to maybe um, improve the police presence out there during those times and also to get some of the other uh, brick and mortar establishments on board with helping us keep a better eye on what needs to what needs to happen to make it a, a good event for everybody during the event including after the event uh, and we think we came up with a, a pretty good plan that addresses that addresses most of the needs um, that, that we've been aware of uh, chief went through um, um, statistics from previous years to see what sorts of issues had been um, had taken place or at least had been reported to us in the past and there really ha isn't anything of significance that we were able to find um, so staff recommendation continues to be to approve, to approve the event and allow us to work with the event organizers to make sure that the event goes off without a hitch and is a good benefit for the community thank you um, Commissioners, you're in receipt of two communications, uh, one from uh, 297 Clay Condo Owners Association and a response from representatives of Bike Time. Um, 
representatives of both parties are here uh, prior to the vote I will allow uh, representatives of both parties to uh, give any additions to any materials that were not uh, contained in those communications as, as a follow-up they requested uh, mr. Paul Wright uh, from the clay condo owners association if you'd like to step forward I just need your uh, name and address and again um, any additions that we have uh, not already had uh, brought before us in the, your uh, earlier communication and uh, you have uh, 10 minutes sir thank you mayor and commissioners um, the 297 clay condo associations asked me to come here and I am a member of the board of directors I also own two properties in the complex and I live there so this is a very personal to us this is our residence and while we appreciate the concerns of that have been expressed for the businesses along Western we have a long history of ignoring those of us who have to pay the price 24 7 and in this case those entire four days we have 35 residential units in our building most of those are owned by people who have come there to the building within the last seven years so these are people who have made a new commitment to downtown the building was in some sort of disrepair and those individuals have invested about a, a half a million dollars so far within the last three years we have another half a million dollars on the table for the coming five years so we feel we're making a very significant commitment to bring residential properties to downtown we've done some things with our property to really wed us to the core downtown right down to turning our entrance from Webster to clay and maybe a small thing um, on paper but the psychological change between us entering from the back door off of Webster that used to be the business US 31 as opposed to coming in our driveway through the front door off of Clay Avenue we really feel that the property that we're talking about here for the festival we think of it as our living room and so things that are going to happen in our living room are pretty personal to us when we have experienced bike time many of us have found that we have to leave town we are excluded from our residence you cannot sleep you cannot get in and out the two businesses that operate in our building they happen to both be um, law firms they have to close their doors for three days because neither their employees nor their clients can get anywhere close to our building those of us who leave we come back late on Sunday night or early Monday morning to the aftermath and it's the aftermath that really tells the story as the facilities manager that's my role on the board it falls to us to have to clean up everything from debris from the food services where people have walked out of the festival gotten as far as our building which is a block away from the core discard all their food containers some with food still in it they pile them in our um, planters where we have the flowers planted we have people sitting on the front steps smoking weed we have people loitering on our private property in our parking lot we've even had reports of people urinating on the building in the back alley these are very personal to us so when we started looking at the at the festival we recognize that there's one fundamental problem with this festival and that's crowd control with the lack of structures on Western there are no buildings that control how people walk through that area and with the festival not erecting any physical barriers there are no designated points of ingress and egress for the festival this is very in great contrast to Heritage Landing where we have only two points of ingress and egress and pull off great festivals when you go in and out of Heritage Landing you pass through security it's not you know armed guards but you get patted down you get checked for things people are not checked here so we have a hundred thousand people invited to our living room a hundred thousand people according to rackets they make as much in those three days as they do in the other 362 days of the year if you do the mathematics that means there is a nine thousand percent increase in burden to Western Avenue and our neighborhood if I were to ask you for a permit to use our piece of land at 297 clay condos for a 9,000 percent increase in burden to the infrastructure I bet I wouldn't get it because I would be told I couldn't control it 
And that's the problem here. We can't control 100,000 people with the very limited security and law enforcement personnel here. And we who live there pay the price. Businesses all up and down Western and in our building have to close. Residents have to leave and give up their homes for three days and nights. Some stay with friends, some have to get hotels. It just doesn't seem to be consistent with what we just sat through two or three weeks ago now um, at the, in the ballroom of the Century Club where we looked at the upcoming form-based code for city planning and zoning. In all those instances, the buildings are um, slated to be four to six stories tall with the first, being, first floor being residential and floors two through four or two through six being residential. If what we want to do is to draw residents to downtown, how we use our living room will matter. I know people who don't come downtown during bike time because they can't stand the, the disruption. They don't patronize the businesses that are open. I've had um, prospective businesses tell me they won't set up business in downtown in part because this is too disruptive and it's in the middle of the summer, in the middle of July, when everyone wants to be downtown and walking and enjoying downtown. So we really think that the commission has to start recognizing the fact that this is too big and that the very basis for the festival is inconsistent with the intended purpose of downtown, that being retail and primarily residential. That's why we have sent you the 11 points in our letter asking you to not allow this festival to go forward. We have met with the festival organizers on one occasion um, alone and once with the city manager and, and police chief. Um, we don't feel that our concerns are being addressed, have been addressed. I understand um, that there has been a response from the bike time organizers to our um, 11 points. I've not been privy to that response, so I don't know what's in it. Um, so I have to assume that you know they, they, they chose not to share it with us, but our concern is we are evicted from our homes and our businesses and we're trying to make an investment and a commitment to bring residentials downtown permanently. And this festival, ha we are told and we have experienced, is contrary to that goal. Hence our request that it not go forward on Western Avenue. This is more suited for your backyard, not for your living room. That's what we have. Thank you, Mr. Ray. Mr. Clyde Whitehouse. My name is Clyde Whitehouse. I'm the uh, chairman of Bike Time and also the owner of Hot Rod Harley-Davidson at 149 Shoreline uh, Drive. Um, the gentleman that just spoke is correct. We did meet with him twice, once personally, just the uh, couple of members, or one member, I should say, Dave uh, Burlingame, and then we met with uh, them with the city manager and the chief of police and discussed their uh, concerns about the event and, of course, their uh, living room. We've responded in the letter I believe you guys have in front of you, so I won't bore you with all the details in our response to their uh, um, problems and concerns. Uh, what I will uh, address is that we have addressed some of the concerns. As you know, we're going to take all the vendors and all the uh, Porta Johns and those type of things off the sidewalk and off the streets for safety reasons. We decided to put them on uh, the side streets um, for those safety reasons, but now we've decided to uh, further uh, address their concerns by putting the uh, porta toilets further back on each one of those streets so that there was, when there is an egress or a leaving of the event, there will be porta johns where people could use uh, them before they enter onto Clay Street and before they get to their living room. Uh, we obviously do not want anybody from bike time uh, having any uh, going to the bathroom, you might say, on anybody's property on Clay Street or any other street in the city of Muskegon or on the properties in which uh, align those streets. We've also put additional trash cans on Western Avenue and we're going to put them again 
all up and down Clay Street so that when they bring something from the vendors, whether it's food or, or a piece of paper from someone that bought a t-shirt and doesn't like the bag and they want to throw it on the street, they'll have a place to put it. Um, we've also picked up uh, more security this year so that we can put more security uh, around the town, uh, uh, addressing the concerns. Of, this was with private security. I'm talking about the chief could uh, address any uh, additional police and how he's going to do that. But our security will also rover around uh, during the event and most uh, effectively after the event is over at 11 o'clock so that there aren't people on Clay Street, Western Ave or any other streets, Morris, those type of things to address the concerns of which he just talked. Um, it is 100,000 people. We will uh, uh, say that it's hard to control 100,000 people. But uh, I also will say that it's uh, pretty beneficial to the community to have 100,000 people come to our community so they can see uh, where we live, what we do here, our businesses, and hopefully they will come back to live and uh, bring their businesses back here. Uh, I understand their concerns. We've tried to address them the best we can uh, with a festival that's been here for seven years with minimal uh, problems and concerns uh, from uh, anybody else that we know of. He addresses uh, people that he says that have to leave their town and their, their home, and, and if they do, obviously that's not what we intend to have happen, but uh, we haven't had any other concerns from other people in reference to that. Uh, he says businesses close on uh, Western Ave. Um, there probably are businesses that close on Western Ave, but they're also closed other weekends as well. They haven't been addressed to us that that's been the problem because of the event. So we have done as much as we can do this year, furthering our uh, <coughs> commitment to the community and to people like them and their homes. I uh, uh, don't really know what else to say other than that. The police could, uh, the police chief could uh, maybe address some of the other things if you'd like to hear from him, than the things that he's done. Um, we're hoping tonight that, uh, obviously, that we can get a positive vote tonight because it is getting closer within 90 days of the event, and we have made uh, commitments um, to sponsors, vendors, uh, other people in the community, um, and. Uh, I know that the, the city commission has talked to us and of course it's been in the paper that we've came to terms on the farmer's market, which uh, I want to thank everybody uh, for doing that and working together with us. We're looking forward to a great event this year and we're hoping for a positive vote tonight. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Clyde. Thank you. <coughs> Commissioners, any comments or uh, questions? Okay. I'd just like to say, um, you know, I appreciate the businesses working together, uh, trying to come to a means of um, understanding where this could be uh, beneficial to the city of Muskegon and to the uh, residents as well. And also with the farmer's market, um, you know, giving leeway and the uh, residents, I, you know, do have concerns about, um, you know, the vandalism, crowd control. Also, um, I have a question, uh, and maybe the chief can answer this. Uh, and um, Mr. Uh, is it Whitehurst? Okay. Also, um, your event, um, if this is approved, and forecasting to next year, you're looking at 100,000 this year. Um, do you anticipate that that number will grow next year due to a successful uh, event? And um, I think we. I as the city of Muskegon need to show um, a strong arm stating that um, we will not tolerate ignorant, ignorance, I can't even say the word now, you know, anyone being ignorant or that type of um, behavior and vandalism or anything like that. So I think, you know, as a positive city and what we're trying to do is and get people downtown. And I, from what I understand, that was the whole purpose of you know, bringing a farmer's market downtown, having events like bike time. Also, um, you know, um, having a safe environment too for the citizens and the residents. But I'd like to see if this is proved, you know, everyone work together and this thing be a successful um, event. In saying that uh, it would be a successful event, whether it would grow or not next year, mm -hmm. I, I can't really answer the question of whether it will grow. Mm -hmm. how, I'll, how I will answer that is, I got a bottle of water here, and you can only put so much water in this bottle. As an event, we have uh, our concerns or thoughts that you can only bring so many people to downtown Muskegon and uh, safely have them on our streets. 
over seven years, we've had anywhere from 35,000 to 100,000 people. Not all at one time. The 100,000 people is over a four-day period of time. Um, Saturday is probably the most busiest day, so the most amount of people are here on Saturday. Uh, but in saying that, in order for the event to get bigger and grow, and whether we want that or not is another situation, um, we feel that the, the current status and uh, volume is, is controllable, and we have controlled it over the last seven years. Uh, in order for the event to grow, it's going to have to grow outside of downtown Muskegon to be safe, and uh, obviously we're going to need more places for people to stay. Camping may be part of that. Uh, hotels, uh, if the uh, casino is built out by the uh, mall, uh, there would be rooms out there. But I think it's going to take that before the event can grow. I know people say we'd like it to be two times bigger, three times bigger. Uh, that's not going to happen in the, in the near future, nor do we want it to because you can only put so much water in this bottle, number one. Um, as far as uh, working with the farmer's market, yes, we had a little issue in the beginning, and I think it was basically um, an issue of point of view of how that could work. We'll see how it works this year, and I'm have quite confident that uh, the commission and uh, Bike Time can work together to make it uh, the best it can be. Uh, the events that went through in a couple of meetings that we had was uh, uh, enjoyable for me because everybody did work together and we came to a, uh, a conclusion that was beneficial to everybody involved. Okay. Did I answer all your questions? Yeah, or yeah. Was and one, one other more? question. Yeah. And you also stated um, you were going to um, provide more security. Yes. Um, and my question is, with that security, are these trained security uh, um, personnel that you'll be hiring, will they be carrying um, weapons or are they trained to deal with crowd controls of a capacity of this nature? The company is crowd control. And I okay. guess they use that name for that reason. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. But we've used them for seven years. They do not carry weapons. I do not believe right now. They do not carry weapons, but we're going to expand that so that we can address the concerns of Clay Street. But not just Clay Street. We have Morris Avenue. We have Shoreline. We want to make sure we control the entire event, not only safe-wise with security, but also for trash, trash pickup, Porta Johns for the concerns that they have. Let's, let's not be naive. There's 100,000 people here. They're drinking beer. <laughs> Things are going to happen. But I think the police have done an unbelievable job over the last seven years, and the chief has been here for a few years. He's done an unbelievable job controlling that, keeping it safe for the uh, participants and the people of Muskegon, and we should applaud him for that, as well as being welcoming to the people that come here, because we have to welcome them if we plan on them coming back and uh, taking any type of uh, interest in Muskegon. Any other questions that I can answer for anybody? Not a question, just a comment. Um, I think events are, you know, I've been involved in a lot of events downtown, and there's a lot of ways to look at it when you're using other people's property, and, you know, there's a lot of sides. I think over this year we had some issues that came up with changes in downtown property ownership and things like that. Um, I think events are really what make a community unique, though, and um, when Bike Time started in Muskegon, I think that was a great addition to the downtown events. I think, you know, it's always a matter of compromise, and it's always a matter of you never know exactly what's going to happen, but you have to deal with the problems and, you know, the, be as proactive as you can to foresee, you know, what you think is going to happen and, and avoid things. So I think generally it's gone very well, and I'm sure and confident mm -hmm. it's going to be another great th event this year, so I, I think we should support it. Thank you. Um, I, I think it's been a great event now. I'm probably biased to some extent, but uh, mm -hmm. I think it's been a great event for the community. Any other questions, concerns that I can address, or Thank the you chief fine. can address? Are we <coughs> Does anybody have any okay. questions for chief? Well, I think oh, no. you had. Yeah, you know, I, I'd like to hear answers to the questions that you had. That's all I was going to say. Okay. Yeah, he, he pretty much covered it. I guess, um, uh, Chief Lewis, um, due to past events and when we've had the bike time events, were there any reports of? Uh, Vandalism, you may not be able to think back that far, I'm not sure, but um, with properties being vandalized due to a large crowd or um, crime going up during that time of the event of bike time in the areas of the gentleman that uh, talked earlier. 
You know, to answer your question, I think I both I think both the neighbor mm -hmm. and the event planners were accurate in what they stated. Mm -hmm. um, the fact is, um, there's thousands of people here, and that's why we we deploy officers at you know at that location. Of course, we we start out with a, with a cadre of officers, and we escalate that through the day, and to, of course de-escalate in the late evening or early morning hours to to deter a lot of things that are occurring. You know, we're all ambassadors for the city, so we're at these events. We try to be as kind but yet fair and forceful with people when they are start misbehaving. Um, one thing we always do is we do an after action report to see what had occurred. And so I pulled that information out from last year. And I'll tell you, as with the other years, you know, like I told you, we, we put together a security plan based on the last year's problems. That's what we deploy for the upcoming year. And last year we reported about over 20 incidents over the four days. I don't think that's that high. We had about uh, basically eight serious crimes, those are like assaultive type things that we actually took action on and maybe made an arrest and then took, you know, further action. Um, six of those were, were more minor, which would be um, disorderly, um, trespassing, and drunkenness. So totally then we had about six field contacts that we recorded. So when I look at four days and I look at um, the several thousand people in that concentrated area, 20 you know, complaints is not what I call excessive. Um, but I think the reason we have a low number is because we do have a presence there, which is a deterrent factor. Um, I'm working with Mr. Uh, Whitehouse in, in Burlingame about working with those establishments that sell the beer as to security after that 11 o'clock hour, um, how we're gonna change or ramp up or do things differently than we do at four o'clock in the afternoon. Um, we met with the neighbors um, they told us their concerns, um, but one thing when I pulled the statistics, in that block we just didn't have any reported incidents. It doesn't mean it didn't occur, it's just no one called us on it or they noticed it later and then basically put up with it but just didn't call us. Um, but we had, like I said, 20 reported incidents that we took action on. Um, when I talked to uh, Mr. Wright and, and the neighbors um, and heard his complaints, I immediately got with our captain. She is a um, our special events coordinator, and we're going to to work on some adaptive patrols in that area, foot patrols, bicycle patrols, or have officers in that area um, about the times that we think this is occurring to help out. And like um, Mr. Whitehouse said, we are not going to catch or deter all crimes, simply because the sheer numbers. But we do have quite a few officers deployed there. We have to be financially responsible. We, you know, if I put a, 200 officers there, we're still going to have incidents. But I think we have the right number based on the past action plan to police you know, the upcoming event. And we're always monitoring and, and taking a temperature of what's going on. You know, we have support of our road patrol who's out in the city policing if we have a problem at the uh, festival. We also have support of other agencies under mutual aid in case we have something that occurs. But I feel that in the past, we, we've put the appropriate force out there and take the appropriate action for what's been going on. And I think this year I have no fear that we can do the same thing and in addition um, work on, on the 200 block of clay in the surrounding areas during those times that were brought to us to try to do some enforcement there and some presence so that these things don't happen. And I think with the parking lot changes, bringing the bathrooms into different areas and all the things we're doing, we're doing the best we can to minimize those problems that the neighbors I know are experiencing. Thank you. Anything else, Commissioners? No? Thank you. Roll call, please. Or, I just uh, wanted to add, this is, again, more nature of a comment than a question. Um, I, as all of us do, listen to my neighbors and the local businesses that I patronize and so on. So I take very seriously the concerns that we heard expressed tonight because they're legitimate. These are real experiences that people have to deal with. Um, so when you have that, you have to weigh is the benefit of the event worth the discommodation of the folks' normal routine, um, and in some cases for businesses, affecting their income. Um, I look at other local areas as well, and I'm not comparing 
one event to another as because of what it is, but just the effect that a large type of event has on a community. And all of the concerns that I've heard expressed, I also hear expressed amongst uh, the people I know who live in Grand Haven regarding the Coast Guard Festival. That it's crowded, that it's noisy, they can't access their businesses, and a lot of folks that I know of, and I, several work in my office, um, take that week off and you know basically move out of town for the duration um, I think most people enjoy the Coast Guard Festival and are willing to tolerate that for the benefit it brings to Grand Haven we all look at our men in uniform and women in, in uniform and we look at the Coast Guard and you don't get the same reaction you do when you're talking about people riding motorcycles there are some people that any motorcycle is just not going to be acceptable to them. And so you get a different take on the willingness to tolerate this type of event because the bikes are loud. They do make, I mean, I can hear them in my house and I'm a 10 minute walk from Western Avenue. So I appreciate that. Um, but when I look at that this has become a signature <coughs> event for this community, when I see a willingness to work with city staff and the local businesses to try to lessen those problems and to improve the quality of the event, I'm really to uh, get, uh, you know, give this a shot this year, uh, keep an eye on how it's going. And you know, I think if we feel that it continues to improve and continues to showcase the community in a positive way, then I'm willing to support it. And if we feel it reaches a point where it doesn't, then I think all of us would feel the same way that uh, it would be time to perhaps see a, a different location used for this event. So I see both sides of this. I appreciate the amount of compromise that's taken place. And given that, I'm willing to support that for this year. Um, and we'll see how it goes. So thank you. I sure just, enough. Roll call, please. Commissioner Turquist? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Mayor Galrin? Yes. Commissioner Hood? Yes. Vice Mayor Spitaro? <coughs> yes. Commissioner German? Yes. Commissioner Rinsa Mississippi? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. And Paul, we'll continue to uh, work with you and monitor and collaborate to make sure that uh, everybody benefits and we all can be as comfortable as possible. Item C, please. Mobile food vending ordinance, city clerk, summary request. In consultation with downtown Muskegon now, staff has developed a mobile food vending ordinance for consideration. The proposed monthly fee is $300. Those established brick and mortar businesses located in the city of Muskegon selling their own goods through the mobile food vending ordinance may pay a monthly fee of $150. Brick and mortar restaurants located in the targeted DDA area will be charged a monthly fee of $50. Mobile food vehicles shall not be left unattended and cannot be parked between the hours of 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. They shall not operate within 1,000 feet of any city-approved special event or leased park. Vendors wishing to sell at the farmer's market must obtain permission through management of the farmer's market. Mobile food vehicles shall not be parked within 150 feet of any existing brick and mortar restaurant during the hours when such restaurant is open <coughs> to the public for business unless permission has been obtained from the restaurant. Applications will be considered for the following areas. Sherman Boulevard, Henry Street, Apple Avenue, Lakedon Avenue, Getty Street, as well as within the area of the Downtown District Authority and Industrial Parks. Comments from the downtown businesses are attached as well as mapping indicating the distance of 150 feet, 200 feet, 250 feet, and 300 feet parameters around existing brick and mortar businesses. Staff recommendation, adopt the ordinance as presented as well as the resolution stating the areas that a mobile food vending vehicle trailer cart may operate. <coughs> Mr. Rins, Ms. Avinka. I'd like to move that we approve the mobile food vending ordinance and adopt it as presented, as well as the resolution saying the area that a mobile food vending vehicle trailer cart may be Second. Second. It has been moved by Commissioner Rins, Ms. Avinka, seconded by. Oh, oh. Yeah. Commissioner. <laughs> Commissioner Ken Johnson yeah. to adopt the ordinance 
uh, involving mobile food vending ordinance as presented as well as the resolution stating the areas that a mobile food vending vehicle trailer cart may operate. Questions, comments? Commissioner? Uh, just a question. Um, I don't recall seeing this before, so I'm wondering if it's an addition or maybe I just missed it. But the brick and mortar restaurants located in the target DD area will be charged a monthly fee of fifty dollars. Yeah, added since the last one. That was a um, um, yes, it was based okay. on feedback we, we received. The idea was to let the the businesses that are within the city have the reduced fee of one fifty, but then the ones that are within the DDA that want to have a food cart have it even more affordable. One that maybe they want to put out in front of their own store or something like that. Make it make it not cost prohibitive for them to do that, being that they're already downtown. I, I, I love that addition. I, I was just thinking of that yesterday. I was like, we should have a different rate for people in the DDA. So I'm happy to see that added. Uh, targeted DDA. That's the entire DDA. Entire DDA. No? Okay. Commissioner yeah. Turnquist. Uh, at our last meeting, I am not a super fan of kiosks that infringe upon other businesses, but I appreciate the effort uh, made by staff sending out the questionnaires. I think there were some 20 responses and one negative. So uh, you've swayed me over and I will support the recommendation. Commissioner? Yeah, just a quick question about operate, uh, excuse me, businesses um, should not operate within a thousand um, feet. Um, we talked about that um, the last <coughs> meeting. Wasn't it 500 feet at first? Or? Oh, that was 150 uh, feet. It was oh, 300, oh, 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 and then okay, didn't it increase then it to, to 1,000 now. Well, it was 300 went down to 150. Was a different thing, but I think um, Anne Anne looks like she wants to explain that. Too. No, no, okay. Okay. just say that the 1,000 feet is uh, away from any special event, city approved special event, so they can't be closer. They have to be part of that event to okay. be closer. Oh, okay. All right. <coughs> Commissioner Hood. Did you? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I'm very supportive of the this idea, and uh, the only concern I've heard, the biggest concern I've heard is that the fee is still too high, and that uh, some people are concerned that people still won't take advantage of this, you know, opportunity because of the, especially if you're outside of the city, three hundred dollars a month, um, and some people pointed out that maybe other cities have lesser fees I think that this is a good starting point um, I really think this is a great idea and we should see how it goes for a year and possibly revisit that with input from you know people who might operate such things also I talked to a couple people in the industrial park and they were very supportive of the idea too I was thought they might be concerned parking on Keating or you know in front of ADAC but they seem to uh, like the idea so I think it'll be pretty really great okay very good vice mayor Yes, I, I'm very pleased to see this come forward. I, I know the concerns that the folks who own the brick and mortar businesses have, and I am supportive of the fee structure included here. Um, I mean, we're not having people set up a lemonade stand for a nickel of glass. These are people who are going to have to put together uh, a reasonable business plan and have the capital to, to, to operate this. And in these fees, uh, if, if that is excessive, I would question whether or not they have a valid business plan. Um, the other thing is, is right now we're in kind of a chicken and an egg dilemma, you know, which came first. And we're told a lot of times, well, I'd like to do something downtown, but there's not enough traffic to justify it. And we hear that from the banks in particular. Well, how do you generate traffic with, you know, empty space? And that's a discussion for a different time as to how we ended up with all the empty space. But it's there. And this is an opportunity to create some traffic, fill in some of that empty space with a very low cost threshold. And if, if successful, we will see that traffic level increase and hopefully reduce that barrier for people who might otherwise be interested in investing in downtown in brick and mortar businesses. So I think this will ultimately help if executed uh, with a seriousness toward these being money making operations. And I think as traffic increases that the local businesses that are already downtown will see additional people downtown helps their business as well. Um, 
I just think we need to be aware though, as we've seen with our liquor licenses and so on, that you still have to have a good business plan, you still have to have quality product, you have to have excellent service, and you have to be consistent. If you're there some days and not other days, if you close up shop early some days and not other days, you're not going to have a business and this won't work. And so I think now the challenge is with the folks who've been advocating for this to make this work. And I hope it does. I think we will all benefit. Thank you. Anything else, Commissioners? Not roll call, please. Commissioner Johnson? Oh, oh sorry. There's no, no public comment. <coughs> Commissioner Johnson? Oh, yes. Mayor Galran? Yes. Commissioner Hood? Yes. Vice Mayor Spitaro? Yes. Commissioner German? Yes. Commissioner Rinson Lasipica? Yes. Commissioner Turnquist? Yes. Motion passes. <clears throat> Item D, please. Amendment to the Transient Merchant Ordinance, City Clerk, summary request. Staff compared the current transit, transient merchant ordinance with several other communities and reviewed comments received by customers and is making recommendations. Some proposed changes include Offering the license as an annual fee instead of a daily license currently allowed a maximum of 60 days per calendar year. The current fee is $30 per day. The proposed fee is $150 annual fee renewed on May 1st of each year. The bond amount is proposed to increase from $500 to $1,000. School sponsored events should not require a permit. Merchants may stay in one location no longer than 45 days. Current ordinance states 90 days. Hours shall be set between 9 a.m. and 8 p.m. or sunset, whichever is earlier. Merchants may not operate within 1,000 feet of any approved special event or lease park unless they have obtained a permission from the event sponsor or leasee. The license does not allow for the sale of goods or services at any city-owned park, facility, or farmer's market without a permit from the city. Residents and businesses selling parking spaces on their property during a city-approved special event in the downtown district are required to obtain a license. At least one ADA compliant restroom facility with a hand washing unit must be made available to the public for the first 50 parking spaces being offered on a parcel and two restroom facilities be available on parcel selling 100 or more parking spaces. <coughs> the license must be prominently displayed at the entrance to the parking facility and if the number of parking spaces meets or exceeds 50, a sign must be prominently displayed indicating to the public that a public restroom is available. The fee for a license is proposed to be $25 for the first parking, 50 parking spaces and $50 for more than 50 parking spaces on one parcel. Staff recommendation, adopt the ordinance as presented. Commissioner? Commissioner Johnson? I move to adopt the ordinance as presented. Second. It has been moved by Commissioner Johnson, seconded by Commissioner German to adopt the ordinance as presented regarding amendment to the transient merchant ordinance. Any comments? Questions? Matt, roll call please. Mayor Galran? Yes. Commissioner Hood? Yes. Vice Mayor Spataro? Yes. Commissioner German? Yes. Commissioner Rinza Masipiga? Yes. Commissioner Turnquist? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Any other business commissioners? And I have Mr. Rob Murphy. He wanted to speak on the L.C. Walker Arena. Good evening. Good evening. It's uh, Rob Murphy, temporary resident, 1718 Beach Street, Muskegon, Michigan, uh, vice president of business development for L.C. Walker Arena and Event Center. And I just want to spend a couple minutes uh, tonight uh, thanking you for the opportunity to visit with you a couple weeks ago and share a few updates. Uh, we take real seriously the opportunity and privilege to manage L.C. Walker Arena. I think it was Warren Buffett who said, uh, someone is sitting in the shade today because someone planted a tree a long time ago. Well, Lewis Carlisle Walker planted a rink in downtown Muskegon 54 years ago. And those of us who have been here just a short time are privileged to work at L.C. Walker Arena and wanted to just share a few updates about some of the activities that we have going on this summer, which we'd love to invite you and residents of Muskegon to attend. First, May 6th, uh, Kenny Thomas, a Army Airborne Ranger, country 
music star and one of the best speakers I think uh, you'll ever listen to is going to be visiting Muskegon. It's part of a new leadership lunch series that uh, we're launching uh, really to uh, help motivate Muskegon, its residents, business leaders, uh, and inspire, challenge, and motivate Muskegon to be all that it can be. And so Kenny is our inaugural speaker. We're thrilled that he will be here in Muskegon uh, with an unbelievable message on leadership and uh, the challenge uh, for our residents and those in attendance. We've received some real good response from some high schools in the area as well as business leaders will be joining us. May 17th, a little different event will be taking place in downtown Muskegon. We'll announce this week, we'll sign a five event series with knockout promotions. Uh, it's mixed martial arts, once again, a little different event, but we'll have two of those signed in our main bowl, three in our annex over the course of 2014. Um, we uh, have five hockey camps coming to town, including the Detroit Red Wings, and one of, of the gentlemen you'll see perhaps when you come, go home tonight, uh, number eight, Justin Advocator, will be with us this summer at uh, LC Walk Arena, helping teach the next generation of youth a little bit about hockey and character at both our Detroit Red Wing Youth Camp and our Hockey Ministries International Camp. And then one thing we're excited about, they're not real excited about this in Spooner, Wisconsin, but we've landed uh, for the first time uh, the USA Hockey Officials Training Camp. This is historically been held in Spooner. It's the last week of August. 75 of the best and brightest young uh, officials will be coming to Muskegon, staying at the Holiday Inn. And uh, if you're looking for an opportunity to come on out and perhaps cheer on a referee, we'll have that opportunity <laughs> last week of August. And there's a lot more on the docket, but uh, we just wanted to thank you once again for the opportunity to serve you, uh, the city, the county, and uh, the residents of Muskegon. We look forward to being back uh, later this summer with some additional events taking place at LC Walker Arena. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. You bet. That sounds exciting. Thank you. Are there any other, any other members of the uh, public that would like to uh, address? I have some pictures. <laughs> Judge Judy shows pictures, so I guess Muskegon <laughs> says, I have a real concern. Eloise, I just need your name and address. Oh. Steve, you know who I am. I know, but for the record. <laughs> Eloise I'm Hefchi. Eloise Hefchi, and I live at 1960 Cutler in Muskegon. Um, I have a real concern uh, now that the uh, inspection department belongs to Safe Built, and I hope they do a real good job, but I should tell you that we have <clears throat> a real problem in, in one home area in Lakeside, and maybe more, but this one we have been fighting for two years. And Safe Built today say there's nothing wrong with that place. It's a house that has junk all over the yard. She has a yard sale, it's on right now, and I have pictures to show you, a clothesline strung up with clothes, and you're gonna see them come Halloween. They're still gonna be there. I, in fact, I have a picture here of the Halloween uh, leaf bag. But two different people called Safe Built today, and she told me that they'd been out and looked at it. There's not a thing wrong with it. And I just wish she lived next door to it. Because I want you to look at these pictures. These are today's pictures. I took them and had them made. This. This is on Lincoln Street and Crozier. And Lincoln gets a lot of traffic. And so it's a real good example of what people keep their yards up. Now, I should tell you, don't worry about measuring her grass, whether it's eight inches long. There's nothing can grow there. Besides, this stuff would hire it. But I want you to take a look and see, how would you like that? And Safe Built says there's nothing, absolutely nothing wrong with that. They've been out there today, and they approve of what that is. And I, I think you gentlemen better take a deep look at it, because I think it's a disgrace, and I think somebody's got their 
words all wrong. I think it's bad. Thank you. Thank you, Eloise. But Mr. Mayor, I, I do think that... You, do you see the Halloween oh, leaf yeah. bags yet? Yeah. The, uh, the issue may not necessarily be safe belt. Their job is to enforce the ordinance. And I'm sure that I saw the manager taking some notes. If there is a defect in enforcement, we'll take care of that. If the issue is there's a loophole in the ordinance that allows this, we'll take care of that too. They told me today and another person that you can have one garage sale a year and when I went by later today, she put a little sign up in front, garage sale. Yeah. But what I'm telling you is we, do, we went through this all last summer and complained and we're starting this year again and I think it's a disgrace. We've had a couple other locations where people have I'm sure. garage sales daily from the, lo uh, the last snow on the ground to the yeah. first snowfall. So I, I understand okay. how... And I want to thank you very much. And I want to thank you for the job you people do. Thank you. Thanks, all the way. Any other members of the public that like to address the commission? If not, uh, Commissioner Hood? There's nothing more I move to adjourn. Second. It's been moved by Commissioner Hood, seconded by Commissioner Johnson to adjourn. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Good night. <laughs> there are some things. That